this is Victor. I'm here with a new um, painting tutorial, and this time we are going to paint uh, this blue ball. As, um, this is Kevin from Blue Ball. Okay, and we are going to, I'm painting them in the color scheme that you see here. So I'm going to do the same color scheme that you see here on this one uh, 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 Kevin. Okay, it may be that the skin is not exactly the same because I like to do changes on the skin tones, but in principle, we are going to follow more or less the same. Um, pattern. Okay, and I'm going to start applying. I like to start with the skin because it's the hidden part of this guy. So I will start applying um, this one Bugman's glow. Okay, on the skin, on the skin parts. Okay, so it takes a little bit. This includes as well the tail. I'm going to take a little bit of this. I'm just moisturing it. You can start, for example, with here. The arm will do as well here in the inside. Okay, so I like to do this first. I, I like to work from the hidden parts. This will be the four, and the, and then the skin. The four are the most hidden parts. I will do the all the inside of the mouth, and later on we are going to apply a darker color. So we apply this on all the parts. We will change to a bigger brush, maybe it will make more sense. I'm using just such a small brush. Okay, just let me check. Okay, so we are going to do all this. Okay, I'm going to apply a thin layer of Boom Max Glow and I'm back for the next step. Okay, next step I'm going to use Mood Green and I want I will paint the parts of the armor that I want to be green. Okay. So, for example, I'm going to paint the helmet, I will paint the shoulder pads, okay, and I will try, uh, it's a little bit too thick, so I will try to make a thin, a thin layer, and if I see that it's, it's a little bit patchy, I will do a second layer, okay? But in principle, it will work well with one layer. Okay, so you can see, because the, later on we are going to do highlights and, and shading and so on on paneling. So, here as well, I keep the helmet in green, and then the thing I will keep is the middle part in red. Okay, so it's going to be, the uh, armor tries to be a combination of this very bright green, Combine and I need to put some water on the green as well. Okay, this very bright green combined with red. Okay, so I will do all the armors. The clothes they go in red. Okay, the, the, this part goes in red and the top clothes goes in black. So you will see once it's done. Okay, so I will do that. Mood green. As normally, as as, norm, as you, if you follow mo a lot of my tutorials, first I will do a basic painting. I will do all the base coats in most of the parts. Then we are going to work on the uh, how to do the washers and the highlights. Okay, but at this moment I'm focusing on the base coats, just to block all the colors. So I'm doing that and I'm back for the next step. Okay, I have applied the green. Now I'm going to use Gorgunta Brown and put this on the fur. Okay. I will apply it here and I will go here in between. Yeah, that I mess up this way. 
I was hesitant if I do this before the green armor. Okay, we will need to clean up maybe the green armor later on, but it's not a big deal. So I'm going to do this on all the parts where we have fur. Okay, it's around the neck. And now we have to be careful not to leave white spots. Paint the transition. So okay, you want to be sure that you cover all the white that you have between the four and the flesh principle okay even here okay so we are going to do the other arm Just leave a small part of flies there. I can apply it now. Okay, and then here. The foot maybe is the part that is the most hidden one. These comments does not have too much disadvantages or bells. I think that I have applied on all the four bars. Okay. Before cleaning I need to wait at this device. I realize that for example here the middle of the scaven symbol I do it green and then I do the scaven symbol in red. Then I saw part that I was missing. Here was. Okay. Next. Um, I will wait now that it's right because I want to do the bandages. And some of them are very close to four or not. Okay, we can do. We can use Black Templar now. And we are going to do most of these bandages that we have or ribbons we have here and there to hold the parts in place. Okay. I will do here for example. I will do the tail. And on the tail I will do as well the blade that he has on the tail with this color. So and I will apply it as well on the chain mail because I want it to apply metallic later on. So I have the feeling in the bigger surfaces where I want metallics I will also apply the black templar because I have uh, I like it more how it looks metallic over black templar than directly over the white primer. As you can see I'm doing as well the, this top piece of cloth that they have. Okay, I'm doing all that. Uh, okay, as I said, I will apply it here on this. I will do the, the round and the protection as well. Okay. So let's finalize this. Ok, 
Okay, I will do all that and I will be back for the next step. Okay, next step I'm going to do the red. So I'm going to do it's almost everything except the bell that will go in a brown color, but we are going to do it bottom close. And then the the details in the armor that we want in red. I will also do the glove. Okay, I'm doing the hands in red as well. I think they look quite intimidating in red. At the end, if you injure your opponent, the block will not be that visible. Okay, so here I just realized now I miss a four, so we will come back. Now uh, it, it's normal that from time to time you realize that you miss something. Just come back later on and do the parts that you have missed. Okay, for example, here I lost a little bit of the four, and since there is a bandage there, so I will come back later on to clean up these parts that I, I miss or to do this part that I miss. Okay, so normally these things, this. These corrections I do it off camera, but you have to understand that no, none of us are perfect, and we can do mistakes. Okay, well, at least I'm far from perfect, and I do mistakes. Why well, forget? Why overlook some parts? So I will do this, and I'm back for the next step. Okay, next step, I'm going to use Blakeland Flesh Shade and I will apply this on the skin parts. Okay, so we are going to take it and we apply like that. Okay, including the tail and the arms. So we do a shading. Okay, we'll remove a little bit, a little bit the excess. We don't want the whole, whole we don't do something like that. Okay, and then the tail. I will start from the top. I will go down. I will do this before doing the green because in case I'm dirty in the green. I will clean up. Okay, so apply like that, and then we wait the device. Go. You can see. It's quite fast step. I give a lot. Okay. They will start having this typical shade we have from the scaven tails. We also will have starting having some shading on the musculature fingers and so on. So I will do the rest and I'm back when it dries. Okay. Next step, I'm going to use wildwood contrast on the belt. In this case, it's just on the belt and on the back. Okay, I'm going for quite a dark contrast, and I like a lot of contrast to make bells because they give a very nice look. You almost do not need to rework. This is the buckle that we will touch later on. Okay, 
나오고요. 넌 안 나오. I'm going to use um, this one. Well, we can use Bolgan metal or you can use it butcher. I prefer to use Bolgan metal this time. Okay, a dark, a dark metallic. And we are going to do all the spikes and knives and different elements that this rat has. Okay. So I'm going to do that again. Not much mystery here, just a base coat of a dark metallic. Okay. So apply it on all the different parts. For example, the spike here. And so on. So I'm doing that. And I'm back for the next step. Okay, next step, I'm going to use a build tank wing. And we are going to apply a wash over the green. Okay, we take this green here. And I will try to apply it over the green parts that later on we are going to highlight. But the idea here is to create some shading and start preparing this uh, heel on the helmet. Be careful not to go where we have the eye sock um, hole okay so I go like that but be sure that you put some wash around the rivets don't worry if there are parts that you don't have wash but we are going to work and this one I just applied very softly because here we are going to as well this one is very exposed I'm going to remove some Okay. This one we are going to work it like that. Here we apply more because we want this the plates to be really well, well differentiated. Here I want to create a shade as well next to the red. So we do like that. Um, after that, again, we are going to wait that this device. I like to wait until from when I apply one wash after the other because I don't want that the washes mix. Okay, I don't want the washes can mix very easily one with the other and I want to mm, minimize this risk, right? And as I want to put a their shade later on on the metallics and on the red so that is next to the green, it's better to wait that this green is completely dry. Okay, so we do that and I'm back for the next step once this has dried. Okay, next step, I'm going to use Agrax Air Shade on the red and on the metals. Okay, so we're going to apply it there. I try to be quite careful not to dirt them. The, and here I will apply this one on the metal. I want to be careful not to dirt on the green. Okay, because the aggregate shade, I don't want it on the green. Okay, I want to, want to have control where I do. Sorry, what's my note of camera? Where I do. We can apply a little bit if you want on the four, if you have a lighter four. It's up to everybody what type of food you want to use and it's important to apply it nicely on the cloth. Okay. If you don't do some of the rims it's not that important. Be careful that you do at least the rivets so we have this darker shade around the rivers, the rivets. Okay, but that's all. So, here, I'll try to do that. 
and the chain mail also be sure that you if there is chain mail that the holes are filled with the this dark brown the aguixer shade that will look like uh, black so here we go like that and as usual we need to wait that this dries before doing any further step we want this to dry and then we are going to be ready to start doing the highlights and more detailed work but you can see you know this will be if you're looking for it nothing I was forgetting also I will put it in the mouth because I want the mouth to be darker okay so you, want, you can do that like that I realized that I have no metallic I made a mistake some, some okay like that you want the mouth to look like that and as well this the right glove you have a glove or anything all the red you want to cover with agate air shade okay now we will wait at this device and yeah as I was saying if you're looking for a tabletop fast work on tabletop you can stop here okay this will give you a nice tabletop if you this if you do that on all your um, Escapings, you will have a nice looking tabletop um, a team. Okay, now we are going to try to make it a little bit better. We go, we are going to do the next step, that is to do highlights and make the color um, brighter and more contrasting. So I wait the device and I'm back. Okay, next step we are going to highlight the green and to highlight the green I'm going to use the next color. So from lighter to dark, I'm going to use lime green. Okay, from it's from miniature paints. We are going to use mud green, warpstone glow, and of course we are going to have as well um, um, Caliban green in case we need to do a very deep shade. Okay, as the same for warpstone glow, we use it for uh, shading. Okay. But when I say highlight, because sometimes you are highlighting and you need to do some shading. So if I start normally with the mood green and I start doing the edges. Okay. And then I will go, in that case that we have a, a flat armor plate. This one I wanted to go, this is where I'm going to do a little bit of paneling. So it's where I'm going to work with um, Warstone Glow. And I'm going to apply it. On the bottom, for example, here around this. Uh, by the way, I miss this metal part, but it's not a problem. We can do it later. And now I'm going to do what I call a paneling, and we do it by brush. Okay, this is done a lot with airbrushing technique, but you can see you also can do it with uh, a normal brush. And then I will come with the lime green that is completely dry in my palette. So let me just put some water. Need to put some water in my white palette later. Okay, then what I will do is I will take lime green. It's almost yellow, right? This lime green, and we are going to apply it on the edge, like that. And we go down like that. It's a very soft color. I mean have a very light coverage. But it's good enough. Now here we can go like that. So we complete the paneling with edge highlight. And we do the same at the back. And we're going to do the same on all the different um, shoulder parts. So let me do the back as well. Here we have the tricky part that we have this the, the tail in the middle of the way. But again we go with with first I start with mood green as I did before. I think down this line here I will apply warstone glow at the bottom. Trying to leave as you can see I try to leave the edge 
one touch so I just apply Warstone Blend like that and now I'm taking Mood Green and I will mix it with Warstone Glow, I went too thick maybe but it's okay so we can keep working when the tail is not helping having the tail in the way is not helping at all but especially to show it on camera okay but you can see I'm doing the same technique as I have done on the front okay and then what we have armor plates I'm going smaller armor plates so what we do is I come I do the edge fetch first with mood green like that so I, look, I do quite a wide edge and then I go narrower with the lime green okay and I'm doing this on all the parts okay and later on we are going to do the damage okay so first I do that for example on this one here on this on the on the where we have the this Kevin symbol I apply mood green in the middle I take a little bit of lima green lime green sorry a little bit more put it more in the middle and then in that case I will use Caliban green in case the white have leave a gap and I will fill this gap with Caliban green very nicely done, okay, like that now we can come with Warfstone Glow and even thin line even you can come with a little bit of mud green and thin it more okay, like that, it's okay so, and I will work all the armor plates like that and then on the rivets that we have on the armor on some parts I will use just line green and I will apply it on the rivets, okay? so I will be working like that the rest of the armor plates and I'm back for the next step okay, next step I'm going to do the scratches and damages on the armor so we are going to do in some random places first I use Reynolds Height to uh, show or to mark where I want the scratches so for example we can put one here on the shoulder pad going like that okay, like if it's an impact we can make like a like impact there, something like that. Try to do random shapes, not to follow any pattern. And we can put, for example, one damage here on, on the shoulder pad on the top, and you want to put some on the edge, right? Some more on the edge, like that, another one like that. We can put one scratch on the helmet like that, and then we scratch it back and another one like that a little bit okay on the breast you can put as well <laughs> this the, it's not very visible the armor on the rest we can put for example like a small impact here and there I don't want to put in the middle of the scaven symbol not too and then I'm going to use Dorn Yellow okay this one a very 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 light yellow and we are going to go we are going to paint next to where we have the scratches a 
a very little amount. Okay. And I try to do it just in one side, more to the bottom side, to give this 3D sensation, to give depth. Okay, something like that. Okay, I will do for example here on this long scratch. There. And then very thin. Like that. Okay. We are going to make the same here. Then the other thing I will do is I will look for all the small rivets we have in the armor. And I will touch them with the down yellow. Okay. So let's do these scratches there that are as you can see when we put this down yellow around. Is even making the scratch more interesting. Okay, more. This one here is quite tricky because we have the tail in the way. Okay, and it seems that it's giving a lot of depth when you do that. Okay. Here, that the, I went to thick. I'm going to apply a little bit of that green to trim a little bit this dot. We need to forget the scratches we did on the helmet. These very thin ones can be a little bit tricky. And in some cases like this one you go a little bit too thick with the yellow. Now I come back with the Reynolds height. And I do like that. Okay. Or you can come with back with the green color. Okay. Again, here I went with a bit out of the rivet, so I will apply. A bit of dark green around. With that, we have the green armor done. Now we are going to work on the red parts. Here I put a little bit too much. I said, if you put a little bit too much, like here, that the yellow is too thick. In that case, for example, you can also come with the green, the mood green. You can always trim it to make it smaller. It depends. You can make the brown bigger or the yellow smaller, but you can come up and, and correct it. So next I'm going to work on the red and I will use Mephiston Red. I will use Wild Rider Red. And I also have Tools Layer Orange. Okay, and with these colors, mainly what I'm going to do, let me work on the cloth, is what you are going to see. First I'm coming with Mephiston Red. I also have Corn Red to help me to make the transition softer, okay? So I have Corn Red as well, and then... But what I'm going to do is highlight all the 
folds we have fed. Start cleaning up a little bit. Don't worry if it's very bright at the beginning. When it dries, it's not going to be as bright as it seems. Okay, so you do the fold here. I'm working now mainly with um, corn red. And then, if it's needed, we have Renault's height that we can mix it with red to make to work on the shades. Okay, Renault's height is perfect to do this work. Okay, so I use this one Renault's height when I need to do shadings. Okay, and the advantage of having them in the wet palette is that you can mix quite easily. And, and do all the blendings that you need to do. Okay, you can see now the red is much brighter and I'm going to now start increasing the brightness of the folds and I will start using wild rider red. Right? Extra brightness just on the fold. As I said, when it dries, it will be less visible. But if you see that it's too visible, I come down with my piston. You can even come with a little bit of corn and just soften a little bit. Don't see okay? So it's up to you how much you want to. How much you want to go into the orange spectrum? Just give me a moment, I need to mix a little bit this. The paint is really thin, meaning that when it dries, it's being less intense. Okay, it can be very intense at the beginning. But the advantage is that at the end, you don't put that much pigment because it's very thin okay. I will keep the bottom bottom in darker color because I'm assuming it's a little bit dirtier and will be darker so always play with the with the highlights, you don't need to highlight all the parts to the same level you can play with that some parts will be heated more by the light some parts can be a little bit dirty and will be less bright it's just it's up to you how you want which how much you want to highlight okay, and then um, I will show as well one of the symbols for example the one at the back what I do here first is I apply my fist on red in the middle like that now I come with wild rider and I will do this extremes here and a little bit on the middle You can see the bottom one device that is losing intensity already. 
This is advantage of working with a very thin paint. Okay, and now I will take a little bit of my fiston. I'll have me here. Then there are small rivets on nails within these pieces together. This is where I'm going to use the tallest layer orange and I do these small rivets. When they are visible, of course. Then we can put a little bit of orange here. But mainly, I want to put a little bit of orange at the very extreme of these things. This is from the shoulder part, but I will do the same. Okay, and like that, I'm going to do the same way I'm going to do the symbol in the shoulder part, the frame, and I will keep working on the uh, as well on the front symbol and the glove. Okay, so we'll do the same techniques on the rest of the red and I'm back for the next step. Okay, I have this the red done. Now we are going to work on the skin tone. Okay, and for that I'm having I'm using Kisley Flesh. I have a scale 75 color that is called pale skin. It's almost a very light, and we are going to use as well um, Mephiston red and um, tallest layer to make the eyes and flake one flesh and white to the teeth. So let's start with the eyes. I like to start with the this part. So I'm going to apply first my fistle red. Okay, and then we'll do the same on the other side. Okay, I will wait at this device and while I'm waiting at this device, I'm going to do the teeth. And I'm going to do use flake one flesh and put it on the teeth. Okay, trying to keep You know, if you can look at the separation, don't worry, we are going now to, to work on that. Okay. We have the teeth done. I'm going to also apply a little bit of white on the teeth to make them even lighter. I'm more contrasting as well with the skin. Okay, I wait at this device and now I'm going to go back to the eyes. This time I'm going to take an uh, orange fire balance layer. Okay, give this additional brightness that is perfect. Okay, let's go back to the teeth. I'm going to use no rhinos height. With rhinos height, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it at the base of the teeth to increase the contrast with the skin, and then on these ones, a thin line in between the teeth. Okay, and as the line goes a little bit thick, we go back with the bone color, and we can thin the line. Okay, like that is okay. Now we are going to talk, work on the skin tones. 
And I'm going to apply first Kislev Flesh on the skin tone and then on top the pale. We are going to do this and I also have, in case you need it, Book Max Glow in case you need to do some shading in some parts, okay? And as well I have Cadian Flesh Tone in case you need it. But mainly I'm using Kislev Flesh and I don't need to do the second highlight in all the parts I would only do it on the top musculature as you can see it gives a very strong contour so I need to smooth this a little bit and here for example we are going to take the pale flesh and just do it like that ok I want more the pale flesh for the tail and I want to show you why so on the tail what we are going to do let's take it from this side we are going to take first Kislev flesh and paint all this I don't know how to call it, all these segments of this of the, of the tail, okay? Don't be too worried if at the beginning they, they look too stark we are going to solve this later on but we do all the segments like that then the other side <coughs> sorry okay, I will do this part of the tail and you can imagine that the rest of the tail is going to be done in the same way Okay, you can see we have done the tail and now I take the palette skin and we put on the top. Okay. Okay, so I will keep working on the rest of the tail and I'm back for the next step. Okay, so we have done the skin. This whole looks like now. Okay, this is how it looks like. The next step I'm going to work on the black. So I'm going to use administratum gray. Of course I'm going to use black and I'm going to use as well um, downstone. Okay, so this is a mini stratum gray. Put just a little bit on my palette, I don't need too much. Downstone. We are going to do some highlights on all these little things we have. Those bandages we did in with the Black Templar. I'm going to come and do like that. Okay. Like 
like that. We'll do as well the front thing. Okay, we have uh, damage. like that, I'll put it there, okay, and then in that case I will use a little bit of administratum, and we just put there. Have as well here at the back. the new protection that here we are going to just do the top semicircle Okay, here I recommend to have a square black in case you need to do some corrections. Well, this will be all. I'm going to use no XV88. Still have some on my palette. I'm going to highlight this back. And then I will take a little bit of Brenner's height. Front. Okay. Next step, I'm going to take different brush, and I'm going to use a room fan still to do some very little highlights. To the base, to the handle, and we are going. So, for example, what we do is here I will add it this part on this part. You want you want to be very careful and not do what I have done there. If that happens, I will take a little bit of case Reynolds height. Very diluted, and I mix it to the simulate. Reynolds height is one of the best paints we can have. As you can see, very useful to the red, very useful to create some additional shades that you need. And it's great for valves and something if you also did. I'm going to apply no fine still as well. This is this is bag we have there. This is bag one. Okay. 
the knife, we want to add in to increase the brightness. Okay, and then we will need to do these things. because it went there on the right and I didn't want it and solve it okay. and here I will finalize the tutorial so it, it's only missing to put the decals but uh, I, I have done other videos to share how to do the decals so this will be the uh, tutorial for this how I do the escaping the blue ball is given. So I hope you have enjoyed this one. Please give a like if you have liked this video. Share if you think other people can be interested as usual. Thanks a lot for watching and see you again later. Bye.